Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him with all His beautiful names. We have here tonight Sheikh Yusuf Estes from USA who will be speaking on the subject Islam Exposed. So now I, I would like to ask Sheikh Yusuf Estes to deliver his speech on the topic Islam Exposed. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sabiyya ajma'in ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu wa muhammadin abduhu wa rasul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Allah di ja'alana muslimin. The praise is to the one who made us Muslim. Alhamdulillah. And I'm happy to be a Muslim. Very happy to be a Muslim. How many of you are happy to be Muslim? Let me see. All right. Next. Got another question. Do we have any guests with us tonight who are not Muslim yet? Anybody not Muslim yet? You like the way I ask you the question? It means like, <laughs> eventually, eventually. Do we have any here that are Muslim already? Whoa, okay. What I'm going to be talking about tonight is not so much in the academic sense, because everybody who knows me knows that I don't stay on the subject very long, usually, before I start having fun and telling some jokes and stuff like that. So it's not really like you're going to the university to learn about Islam. We're just going to talk about how we can use it in a practical way, what we know. So what do we want to do tonight in this program here in Bangalore, India, is to present or expose the knowledge about Islam. We're going to expose it. Like, why? Because I think it's been like, you know what? Hidden. It's time to expose what is Islam. Insha'Allah. Plain and simple, Englishy. English. Insha'Allah. Okay? But, I gotta be sure. Do we need translation? Does, is there anybody here who doesn't know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. That's another joke if you think about it. If he raised his hand, it means he understood what I said. Duh! <laughs> I love to do programs with the children. I go to the schools, you know, and I always like to ask, how many are in the first grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade? How many of you are here today? They raise their hand. How many are not here today? Always one puts his hand up. <laughs> So that means when I'm talking, you, won't, you need to think. While I'm speaking, I want you to think, because maybe I'm going to pull another one on you, okay? Let's get started. In order to expose Islam correctly, I need to know what is this word, Islam. Many times we hear Muslims say, Islam is peace. Did anybody ever hear that? Islam is peace. Huh? Really? My teacher and Sheikh sitting beside me, his native language is Arabia, right? It's your language, Arabic. Yes. So if I greet him, I see him for the first time or second time, whatever, I greet him in the Arabic language, will I say to him, Ah, Sheikh, Islam alaikum. So it doesn't mean peace. I always say, Salam Alaikum, not Islam Alaikum. Mm-mm, doesn't mean peace. Whoa. It comes from a root in the Arabic language, a verb, which is Salama. From this verb, Salama, we find words like Taslim, Aslam, Istislam, Salam and Islam. This means that Islam is what I call the perfected verb. It reached a level that it has a whole lot of in it already. You don't need to do anything else with it. It's there. And here's what it says. One word. One 
simple word has this meaning. Watch. Five words in Arabic. Five. At least. First, surrender. You know? Like when they come in with the guns, you surrender. Put your hands up. Second word, submit. This means you're going to agree to some terms. I agree. I submit. That means, and when you say submit, you mean that you're going to do something right now. I'm going to agree to some terms, and it's called the Shahada. To bear witness in open testimony, there is only one God. And when I say that, I mean there's only one who's worthy for me to love. Worthy for me to say thank you. Worthy for me to look up to and ask for whatever I need. And as such, it means he's the only one worthy to obey. And that happens to be the very next word, obedience. Obedience. To totally obey commandments of His. Not man-made commandments. We have good commandments like wear your seat belt. We have that in the United States. I never appreciated a seat belt really though until I ro rode around in a car here in Bangalore, India. Now I like seat belts. <laughs> and they told me it's not mandatory. I said, for me it is. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> And then come back to my subject. You obey the law of a law. That's the third word. Fourth word, sincerity. This means that what I do, I do it for a law, whether you know it or you don't know it, or you like it or you don't like it, or I like it or I don't like it, I still do it for a law. Total sincerity. And you ruin that, by the way, when you start to show off for the people. You ruin it. As soon as you start thinking, hey, you see me here? I'm praying a lot. Hey, hey, I'm even fasting. It's no good. I want to elaborate on this one before I move to the last one. I heard a story. Right after I came to Islam, I found a manual published for the Muslim Student Association on how to share Islam. And it had a story in there about sincerity. It was talking about in a mosque, a masjid, two elders, Sheba, they're sitting against the wall and they're watching a shabab, a young man. He comes into the mosque to say his salat, to say some prayers. And when he stands there, he stands so straight that one sheikh, he said to the other one, MashaAllah, oh, isn't that beautiful? Look how straight he's standing so nice. And then he went into the ruku, bowing like this. And the one said, yes, and look at him bow. His back is perfectly level. This is like in the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look, his back, you could put a book on his back. It would be flat like this, mashallah. And then when he stretched out on the ground, he put his arms out. You could see under here like this. Just, he said, it looks like I'm looking at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is praying like that. MashaAllah. And at the very end of the Salah, when the boy was almost finished, he turned his head like this. Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. And he's turning his head like this and they're saying, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, look at this boy pray. And he said, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. And I'm fasting too. Huh? Did you get that? Where's the sincerity? You're fasting and you have to tell me? <laughs> that means it out the window. No sincerity for Allah is for what? Nothing. He wastes his time. Okay, now I want to come to the last one. This word is salam, peace. So we found out, yes, there is peace in Islam. Yes. So if somebody said Islam is peace, they're not really wrong, but they're showing it the wrong way. It's there. There's peace in Islam. But it doesn't mean peace in the Middle East at any cost. Although we would like to see peace in the Middle East. 
It doesn't mean peace on earth, goodwill to man. Although we like that too. That's the part of Islam is working for that. But this peace in the word Islam is the peace that you have inside of yourself in your relationship with your Lord. And that's the best peace there can be. To know without any doubt there really is a God. One. And I have a way to communicate with Him. You know what it is? Obey Him. In sincerity. Best communication there is between you and your Lord is for you to listen and obey. Semina wa atana. Allah said in the Quran, the believers, this is what they say, we hear and we obey. Straight up. I love it. And that's why I'm happy to be a Muslim. Now I expose to you the word Islam. If I stop right there, I did my job. I can quit right now. But with your permission, I'll continue and explain a little bit more. Okay. The next thing is to ask, then who are these Muslims anyway? Tell me about why you got a religion called Islam. Is there a separate religion called Muslim? Because I was on a radio show in Florida a couple of years ago. And when I went on the radio show, they, the lady who's hosting the show, she began to take a book. She didn't introduce me. She just started reading a book saying some things, bad things, lies against Islam. And I'm looking at her like, what the heck is she doing? It's a book by Stephen Emerson. He calls himself an expert on Islam. And in fact, the government in the United States calls him an expert on Islam. The man writes lies and he will not sit down with us in public to have a talk or a discussion because he knows he's lying when he says these things. But the people believe him. And she's reading out of this book, and I'm sitting there getting mad, you know. Look what she's saying, all these things. That's not true. But then I had to remember, before I came to Islam, I used to say the same thing. I used to say the same thing. Because that was what I was told. When I was preaching Christianity, I asked, and the other preachers told me, Muslims are bad. They're terrorists. They're hijackers. They don't even believe in God. They worship a black box in the desert and they kiss the ground five times a day. Total infidels. That's what I was told. Alhamdulillah. As a Muslim, I will tell you, we have shortcomings. But our religion of Islam is perfect. There's nothing wrong with Islam. There's something wrong with the Muslims. Yes. So we need to discover who are the Muslims. And just before, uh, well actually just after the radio show, as we were walking out of the door, the lady insulted Islam so bad, I tried to answer some things, but you know. As we went out the door of her studio, she turned to me. She's acting like an expert on Islam, by the way. She turned to me and she said, oh, I forgot to ask you something on the radio. I wish I would have asked you. I said, what is it? She said, I wanted to know which one are you? Are you Islamic? Or are you one of the Muslims? Are you Islamic or are you a Muslim? Now let's find out who are the Muslims. Think about this. In the Arabia, the language of Arabic, it's not English. There is no word Islamic. And one who does Islam, I said it's a verb, right? In English, in English, when you have a verb, then the action of doing it, you put ing, talk ing walk ing think ing right right and the one who does it walk er talk er think er stink er oh, wait i'm sorry anyway got carried away again so you can see that in english we use a suffix called er that's the one who does it er in Arabia, they have a prefix before the verb. Moo. Moo. Okay? Not like a cow. Don't go moo like this. Just moo. When somebody calls the prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That's a call to the prayer. 
That's called the Adhan. Adhan. Can you say Adhan? Let me hear you say it. Hello, you don't have a microphone. I do. Adhan. Mu Adhan. Muadhan. Ah. The column speaker. The column. Muta column. Travel. Safar. The word safari comes from the Arabic word safar. And sometimes when I'm traveling, I'm suffering. But that's a different word. Safar. Mu. Safar. Mu. Safar. Traveler. And then you make sully. This is sully. He's sully. Huh? Mu sully. Place to pray. Salla. Masalla. This is ma instead of mu. Masalla. You get the idea how it works, though? So it's prefix, prefix, prefix. Instead of ing, instead of er, you use mu or ma in front of it. Got me? Easy. Now let's go back to the verb. Islam. Islam. Whoever does Islam is a what? Mu Islam. Muslim. Let me hear you say Muslim. Again, Muslim. How do you say it? You want to be a what? Yeah, there we go. That's easy shahada, wasn't it? <laughs> so whoever wants, first of all, they have to identify that there's a law. You have to believe in a law. But whoever believes in a law, and then they want to do Islam with a law, they're a Muslim. Whoever believes in a law, and they want to surrender, submit, obey in sincerity, and be in peace with him, they're a what? Muslim. Now, we exposed everything except one word's left. Okay. One more word I think we need to talk about. Allah. Who is Allah? Allah means God, right? Wrong. Not in Arabic, it doesn't. No, sir. The word in Arabia for a God, something to be worshipped, is Elah. Elah. Let me hear you say Elah. Elah. That's a God. You can make it plural. More than one. You say Auliha. Auliha. This is God's. That's how you make the plural of Elah. Auliha. And Allah, some people told me it means the God. Like big G. But that's not true either. Because you can put the article Al in front of it and it's Alilah. Al Ilah. And it still doesn't mean Allah yet. You have to do one more thing. You know what it is? You have to put it together in such a way that you can't break it up anymore. You have to perfect it like this Allah. Allah. Because then it cannot be made plural anymore. You can't change it, it can't be plural. And it can't be a boy or a girl. Can't be male or female. No gender. It's so unique, there's nothing else like it. The word Elah means something to be worshipped. But the word Allah literally means the only one to be worshipped. It can't mean anything else. And it was understood at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so strong that when he brought the message to his people, they knew right away what he was saying. The translation to English is really bad if you say that Muhammad went to his people and said, God is one. He didn't say that. If you said he went to his people and he told them, Allah is God. Some translators say it means he told them, Allah is God. That would not have bothered them at all. Because in Arabic, they were already using that word. They used it. They knew the word Allah. That wasn't the problem. It's the phrase that he used in Arabic that blew him away. Because he said, La ilaha illallah. La means no. Ilah, ilaha, is something to worship. 
Illa means with the exception of Allah. And they knew it meant you can't worship anything at all, nothing at all, except the only one worthy to be worshipped, who is not like his creation in any way, shape, or form. He's so unique. He's not a he, he's not a she. And he's never plural. There's nothing like unto him. The name is so powerful. And the description in the Quran, Lisa kamitli he shayin. There isn't anything like him. And Allah said in the Quran, Wallam yakulluhu kufu wan ahad. He's so unique, nothing like him, and he is ahad from the root wahid, which means one. He's so uniquely one, ahad, there's no two coming after it. <gasps> you know who we're talking about, don't you? We all know who that is, don't we? Even the Hindus know exactly who I'm talking about. I rode over here from Mumbai, which used to be Bombay. But they didn't like the bombs anymore, so they became mums. It's okay, Mumbai. I like that joke. They laugh at that joke. When I was coming over here, all right, and in the airplane, sitting next to me was the kindest, sweetest gentleman. I mean it, sincerely. And I identified myself to him. And he was so kind. His name is Shiva. He's Hindu. And I didn't tell him anything about religion. I'll just talk to him about traveling, about, you know, what do you do? He's the president of the bank here in Bangalore, president of the bank. He told me, God is one. I said, yep, we got no problem with that. He said, there's no other God except God. I said, that's right. He said, there could only be one God. I said, yep, I'm with you. Should I argue with him? No. He said, regardless of what some people say, there's really only one God. He said, you're right. Some people might say, well, that statement's enough to go to Jannah. Is it? Is it? I'm going to ask you a question. If the Hindus know there's only one real God, the main God, right? And we know there's really only one God, Allah, Christians say, well, really, there's only one God. Most of them. Some, like, I don't want to mention any names. I'm not going to say Benny Hind or something like that, because that'd be wrong. Oh, Sheikh, I slipped. Anyhow, they will tell you that God is one, but he's three, and he got a father, got a son, got a Holy Ghost, got all this stuff going on, but whatever. They still say he's one. The Jewish say God is one. So many people said God is one, Right? But is that enough? Even if you knew La ilaha illallah, is that enough? No. I want you to go back and think about what Sheikh said last night. He differentiated between the word Iman and knowledge. Having Iman or conviction conviction in something as opposed to just knowing about it if you know the traffic light is red will that save you from a traffic accident if you drive through it anyway huh the light is red and you said yes if the light is red I know it's red and I'm gonna drive through it anyway what will happen in fact, here in Bangalore, you could probably get run over in a green light. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> my point is, just knowing that Allah is one, how is that going to help you? How many of you, you believe there really is a devil? There is a shaitan. You believe it? You believe it? Okay. Does shaitan know that there is a God? Of course he does. Does he know Allah is one? Yeah. Does he know about Islam? Probably better than I do. But does he do it? Nope. And that's the real problem. As we say in Texas, where I'm from, that's where the rubber meets the pavement. That's where the friction starts right there. We can say a lot. But it doesn't count until we find out what we're doing about what we say. 
you are not a Muslim until you Islam. So now you've had it exposed to you. Who is the law? The only one to be worshipped. What is Islam? The proper way to have a relationship with him and surrender submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. And who are the Muslims? The ones who do it. So I pray that to the only one that I'm going to pray to and ask him to make all of us recognize that and submit to him on those terms. Amin. You're supposed to say Amin. Don't you watch TV or something? That's what they do on TV like that. Amin. Amin. Okay. Anyway, now I'm going to shift gears a little bit. That, uh, that's the end of my program. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit. I'm going to tell you a quick story and I'm done. The story goes like this. There was a man who was a great scientist. But he it was a little strange. He didn't like to travel in airplanes. He was afraid of airplanes. And he didn't like trains. He liked his own car. And he used to have to go to many universities and lecture. So he got a driver. And the driver would take him to all these places to give his lectures. And every place he went, he was the top top person in his field in some kind of nuclear biology physics something I don't know but everywhere he went people were amazed but he always gave the same lecture he started with the same word and ended with the same word every time like a book never deviated a single word so one day when he was riding along in the car his driver started saying his whole lecture the whole thing all the way through he said what are you doing he said I'm trying to keep awake so I'm saying your lecture he said, you know my whole lecture? He said, yes, I know everything in your lecture. He said, I can't believe it. Let me hear you say it again. He said the whole lecture again. He said, wow. He said, you know what? I'm shy. I don't like to go in front of the people and I'm tired. I just want to relax. You go do my lecture when we get there. He said, what? He said, yeah, I trade hats with you. You give me your cap. You take my professor cap. And when we get there, they don't know what I look like. You just go up there. And give the speech. He said, yeah, why not? I could do it. Then he said, oh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I forgot one thing. The questions that come afterwards. There's always questions. The driver started laughing. He said, sir, they never ask you any question except what they asked last time. It's always the same question. I guarantee you I know the question. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. He named all the questions and he named all the answers. He said, you're right. He said, you know what? That's what we're going to do. So when they got to the place, the professor's driving the car. The driver's in the back. When they got there, they opened the door. They took him out right away. They took him up to the stage and put him up there. And he started giving the lecture. And then people said, oh my gosh, listen to this man. Wow, you know? And then when it was all over, they did a question and answer. They go to the microphone, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 ooh, 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 When it's all over, one lady stood up. And she said, I would like to ask a question. And she asked a question nobody ever asked before. And the driver is standing there looking at her. And the professor sitting in the back and he's smiling because he wants to see what the driver is going to do now. So the driver looked at the lady and he said, Madam, that is a stupid question. That is so stupid, I'm going to let my driver answer it. And with that, I'd like to introduce my driver. This is Dr. Jaffer Shaky Dries. Uh, we'll move on to the question and session. And uh, one question will be from brother's side. And the second will be from sister's side. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Sheikh Yusuf, as I told you, we were in a radio show a couple of years ago. The host of the program was saying something against Islam. If I'm not mistaken, Brother Yusuf, you said there was a book written by Steve Emerson. Which book is that? I want to know. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah, First things first. You are asking me about a book. And before I go any further, fa'ina istakul hadithi kitab Allah, the best of the books is this book. So I'm going to recommend this book before I talk about any book, even books that I write. I love this book. It's called a Quran. Uh, as far as the book that I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> until I'm ready to endorse it and get people to buy it, I'm not going to mention it. The reason is because I found today the Muslims, their iman is so weak. 
that they're going to all of the websites that attack Islam, but they won't come to the websites that promote it. So I'm not going to tell you the name of the book because I know you'll go buy it, and I don't want you to do that. Okay? But I love you for the sake of Allah. It's a good question, and you gave me a chance to say something I really wanted to say anyway, so thank you. By the way, I did not pay him to say this. I wanted to tell you this, by the way. Thank you. But here's the deal. Right now, if you go to google.com on the internet, everybody know what's a Google? Yes. You're Googlers, aren't you? Mm -hmm. When you go there and type in the word Islam, you're going to find there's like 10 million websites got the word Islam. I have three, alhamdulillah, websites, domain names, Islam tomorrow, Islam yesterday, and Islam always. With those sites, and we're promoting them, you hear me all the time talking about it. It's in our CDs, it's in our videos, everywhere. But even so, out of those 10 million, we only come up about 65. Sometimes 58, 57, 62, 71, 72, like that. We're not in the top 10. We used to be in the top 10 always, in 1999, but not anymore. But in the top 10, every single time you go to Google, in the top 10, there are at least two websites attacking Islam. The first one is, I'm not going to tell you. And the second one is, and I'm not going to tell you that one either one. But I want you to stop going to the websites that attack Islam because, wallahi, every time you do it, it makes it go up in the search engine. And stop and think about it. If I give you a glass of water, you don't know where it came from. And we're in India. But I give you another glass of water and you saw me pour it out of the mineral water bottle. Which one are you going to drink from? So thank you for giving me a chance to advertise the book I want you to drink from right here. The Quran al-Kareem. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum.